Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to tell you about my spring TBR. TBR stands for to be read. So in other words, these are the books that I want to read in the next three months. My TBRs are a little bit different from most people. For one, I like to do them seasonally rather than monthly, but I also, because I'm a mood reader, put way more books on my TBR than what I'm actually going to be able to read. I consider my TBR more to be a list of books for me to choose from and not necessarily a list of books for me to check off. So today I'm going to be going over 30 books with you, a few of which I have already started. But before I talk about my spring TBR, I want to touch base with how I did on my winter TBR. So in the winter I read 12 books, which I'm not going to lie is a little on the low side for me, the low side of average. But I had a few seasons last year where I was reading like 17 to 20 books, and so I was a little sad to see that I'd only read 12 in the winter. I did also have one book that I DNF'd. Another thing that I like to look at is how many books did I read that were not on my TBR. I do allow myself three books every season or one a month to read outside of my TBR. And in the winter, I only picked up one book that was not on my TBR and it was the one that I DNF'd. So I completely stuck to my TBR last season. I will definitely be needing a repeat of that in the spring because I have a lot of books that I need to read for the BookTube SFF awards. If you're familiar with the awards, you're not going to be too surprised by a lot of the books on my list, but I do have some books that are not part of the awards that I will be talking about. Just not very many. <laughs> Before we start talking about what I'm planning to read, let's talk about what I am currently reading. So I have actually finished a book already in March, which I talked about in my last reading vlog, and that is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. This was a work book club pick for me, and it definitely took me a little bit by surprise. Other than that, I am currently reading two books. One of them is the one behind me, The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. This is one of the BookTube SFF Awards YA nominations, so that's why I'm reading it. And I'm currently a little less than halfway through with that. My current audiobook right now is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which is another BookTube SFF pick. It is one of the science fiction nominations, as well as being one of the nominations for the debut category. And that one I'm about 20% through. Okay, next I'm going to be talking about my TBR jar picks. So I do have a TBR jar here behind me, and I pulled out three books from this jar every season so one for each month and I add them to my TBR but I consider my TBR jar picks to be kind of like rolling picks because I don't want to force myself to read things that I'm not in the mood for. I have been doing pretty terribly with my TBR jar picks over the past few seasons and they're starting to stack up on me. Last season I only read one book that was a TBR jar pick when I should be shooting for reading one a month. Anyways, these are the TBR jar picks that are rollovers from my last TBR. I filmed a clip last week of me pulling out my three new books, so I will insert that here. Hey guys, so I'm here to pull out three new books out of my TBR jar. Typically I do this before like the previous month is even over, like a couple weeks ago, because it is now the first week of March. Because usually I'm just like so excited about knowing what's gonna be on my TBR that I couldn't wait, but for some reason, February just totally flew by and I haven't done this yet. In case this is your first introduction to my TBR jar, I have this jar that has a bunch of paper stars in it and the paper stars have books written on them. The majority of these are my owned books and I use this TBR jar as like a way to try and get me to read my owned books. There are a lot of purple stars in here. The purple stars are books that I added in 2019. I have a few gold stars. Those are like books that people have specifically recommended to me that I would like. And then the ones that have zebra stripes on them are TBR jar picks from like pre-2017. So they're really old. I pulled out a purple star. I pulled out Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This is a book that I have wanted to read for a really long time. It's been on my like one day TBR for a while. I actually thought that I owned it. I thought I owned an ebook copy of it, but I just checked my Kindle account and I couldn't find it. So apparently I don't, but I do own a physical copy of it. 
I have this copy, which is, this is not a cover of it that I've seen. Well, obviously I saw it before when I bought it, but other than that, I like, this isn't the cover that I associate with this book, but I picked this up at a library book sale a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Maybe it's been almost two years. I don't know. But this is an adult historical fiction. It takes place in Iceland. Yes, in Northern Iceland. And it's basically about the last woman to be sentenced to death in Iceland. And she's like sent to a farm in isolation while she's, I don't know, waiting for trial or waiting for execution. I'm not quite sure, but I remember hearing a lot of good things about this. And my friend Elliot Brooks actually really likes this book. And she talks about it, not all the time, but she's talked about it in multiple videos. So I'm excited to have this on my TBR. I don't think I'll get to it soon, but I will get to it. I'll definitely be getting to it a lot sooner than if I hadn't pulled it out of my jar. Okay, let's pull out another star. What star? I pulled out another purple star. It's one of my more recent purple stars. So probably a recent book that I bought. Look at that. I pulled out Beautiful by Juliette Morillier. This is one that I just hauled in my last haul. I bought it in December. I bought it on audiobook. It's an Audible exclusive and Audible, an Audible original, which means that you can only buy it on Audible. Like there aren't any physical copies or e-copies of it out in the world, at least from what I can tell. This is some sort of fairy tale retelling but I don't remember off the top of my head what fairy tale it's a retelling of. But I really wanted to try Juliet Morillier. I do want to read her Seven Waters series. That's kind of what I had intended to start with. But in December, I did buy this audiobook, and I am not opposed to starting with this one. Okay, next book. All right, another light purple star. So one of my newer purchases. I picked. The Wolf in the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. This is one that I like meant to pick up a long time ago. I bought this on ebook. I have it on ebook, right? Yeah, I have the ebook. This is one that I heard Jess from Jess Nevertheless talk about and love a long time ago. And I bought it shortly after hearing her talk about it. But it takes place in, I think, in Alaska, but it's set in not prehistoric times but like a long time ago let me see it's set in 1000 AD and I've definitely been wanting to read books that were set like that long ago because there's just not a lot of books like that and this one is about an Inuit shaman a woman Inuit shaman falling in love with a Viking warrior and I think that they're like gods are real so it has a fantastical element to it and I just I remember thinking that it sounded really interesting which is why I purchased it and I still haven't read it because I'm terrible about reading the books that I own but now it's officially on my TBR and I'll be getting to it sooner rather than later. Alright guys those are my three TBR jar picks for the spring. Out of all of these, I think I'm most excited about reading Burial Rites. But again, with the BookTube SFF Awards happening, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be getting to any of these in the spring. All right, back to the rest of my TBR. So now I am up to 12 TBR jar picks. I really need to start picking them off in the spring. So out of all 12 TBR jar picks, these are the ones that I feel like I'm most interested in reading in the next three months. Okay, now let's move on to the rest of the BookTube SFF Awards picks. So let's start with the ones that I have to read, i.e. the ones that are nominated in categories that I'm judging. So I have 10 booktube SFF awards books that I have to read, two of which I am already currently reading. So the eight other books that I have to read include both The Crow Prince and The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is a really popular YA fantasy series involving Fae. I'm a little nervous to read it because there is an enemies to lovers trope in the series and I don't always do well with that trope but I am excited about it because I generally like Faye stories and I have read Holly Black before and had a good experience so I'm hopeful that these will go over well. I also have to read Skyward and Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. This is also for the YA category. They are YA sci-fi books and I am definitely excited about reading these because I am a Sanderson fan. I've read a number of his 
of his books. He has a huge backlist that I haven't even begun to touch, but I've really enjoyed the Sanderson that I have read, so I have a lot of faith that I'm gonna enjoy both of these books. The only other book I need to read to judge the science fiction category is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin, and I am pretty excited about this one. This is an adult science fiction. I heard there's a lot of political intrigue, which could be good for some people and not so good for other people. So I'm interested to see what I think because I do generally like political stuff. And I've just heard such rave reviews about this that I need to see what the fuss is about. This one is also nominated for the debut category. So that covers the YA nominations that I haven't read and the science fiction nominations that I haven't read. The last category that I'm judging is the short fiction category and I have to read all three of these. I have to read The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. I haven't read any Sylvain Nouvelle even though I've heard of his trilogy and so this will be my introduction to him. I've heard some really interesting things about it and I'm not really sure what I'll think. I generally like dystopians. This is a, a dystopian short story but this is about like some sort of immigration test and that plot doesn't really sound that intriguing to me, but a lot of people have really liked it, so we'll see what I think about that. I also need to read To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. I'm super excited to be reading this because I also have never read any Becky Chambers, and this novella is unrelated to the rest of her series, so I'm excited to get my introduction to her and see what I think. And then the last short fiction nomination is this is how oh, this is how you lose the time war by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar. I am super excited about this. This is supposed to be about time traveling assassins that are pen pals, and it just sounds so good. It's also like the longest out of all the short fiction, which I'm excited about because I just find generally for me when things are super short that there's just like not enough story to love. And so I'm hoping that this has enough story for me to love. I cannot wait to read this. Okay, so those are the booktube SFF nominations that I absolutely have to read in the next couple of months. But there are three more that I really want to read that I'm putting on my TBR. So once I finish those 10 books, the next booktube SFF awards priority I have is to read The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is the last book in the debut category that I would need to read to be able to vote in that category. And so I'm really gonna try to make this one happen. And I just really want to read it. This is an adult fantasy and it's a like a portal fantasy and it's about books, books that take you to other places, I think. I've just heard such really good things about it and I really want to read it. I hope I can squeeze this into my reading schedule. It is also a little challenging to get a copy of it because the holds at my library are a bit insane for this book. And then there are the two fantasy nominations that I haven't read. The first one is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This one sounds really interesting and I would love to read it. It's an adult fantasy. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to squeeze it in. And then the last booktube SFF awards nominee that I would like to read but I'm not sure is really gonna happen is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. If I was to read both Gods of Jade and Shadow and The Starless Sea, then I would be able to vote in the fantasy category. So now that I've talked about what I'm currently reading, all of my TBR jar picks, and all of the books that I need to or want to read for the BookTube SFF Awards, I have four slots left to fill with other books that I might wanna read. A couple of these are sequels to series that I'm currently reading because you guys know that I'm trying to make reading series a priority. So the two sequels that I have added on to my TBR include An Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. I do own this on audiobook. I read the second one last month and I would really like to not let more than three months go before I read the last book in this trilogy. The other sequel is Abaddon Gate by James S.A. Corey. This is the third book in the Expanse series. I read the second one last month and also really enjoyed it and I just don't want to go three months without reading the sequel so I'm really hoping I can squeeze this in. And then the last two slots on my TBR are advanced reader copies that I have received from publishers. The first one is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. 
This is the sequel to Wicked Saints, which I read and reviewed last year when it first came out. I received this advanced reader copy when I went to BookNet Fest last fall, and I've been so excited to read the sequel. This is a YA fantasy that is pretty dark. There's like a pantheon of gods, which is really cool, but it's Russian inspired and there's also blood magic. So people cut themselves a lot in this series to be able to do magic, which is interesting, but also pretty dark. This book is coming out in early April, so I'll be reading this very soon. And then the other advanced reader copy I just got last week when I went to the North Texas Teen Book Festival, which I included in my last vlog, but that is House of Dragons by Jessica Cluis. This book is coming out in May, so I will presumably be reading it in May. This is a YA high fantasy that sounds really interesting to me. I first was intrigued by it because of the author and her previous series. She wrote A Shadow Bright and Burning, which I've heard some good things about. So I am really excited to see what her next series is going to be like. All right, guys, those are all of the books that I'm going to be talking about today. Obviously, like I said, I'm not going to be reading all of these, but the ones that I have to read for the BookTube SFF Awards are my highest priority. I'm going to try to sneak in a couple of TBR jar picks and a couple of sequels on top of my arcs. I don't know how I'm going to read all of the books that I need to read, but I am trying not to let that stress me out and just take it a day at a time and just read as much as I can. If you have read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them down in the comment section. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye. There's nothing in the jar. Stay down. by Jordana Mock, by Jordana, by Jordana Max. Definitely, um, if you want some more, if you want some more thoughts, go, which, and I've read Holly Black before, and because I've generally, it, because I've, bye.